Okay, let's talk about background images. Background images is, is a very powerful tool. Um, what's the difference between a background image and a regular image? You have to ask yourself, am I displaying this image because it's, uh, it's, it, it itself has informational content? Like the kind of, on, in a news uh, judgment way, an image I would display with a caption. Look at this image. Here's the news. This image is the story. That's a regular image, just, and it's going to come from HTML. It's part of that informational structure. But what if I'm displaying the image because yeah, I just have it there for presentation, for appearance, like a background pattern, or maybe even a very large photograph that I put text on top of and so on. It's a background image. Then the image is going to come from the CSS. And it's going to be labeled background image, not from the HTML. So it's not an IMG SRC. So here we go. Um, here's your instructions. You can download them. You can make your folders and so on. Um, there's an opportunity for extra credit here. If so, you'll have extra files in here, and that's explained. Go get your color one. We're going to use it again. Copy it into your root folder. Rename it background your last name. Download the bullseye PNG from the Moodle um, resource folder into your root folder. In the HTML file, using Notepad++, we're going to write some rules there for background image. You can look at your text for help with those commands. Now you can go through these instructions if you want, or maybe it'd be easier if you just play along with me as I do this stuff um, in the file. It will go like that. Here we go. Okay, I've got a file here, and what is it right now? Let me get this out of here. This is not supposed to be here yet. I'm going to save the file. It's just the same old color one file. All right, we're going to use an opacity-based background image, which is a trick your author does in a number of places. She likes to use white opacity-based things. It's a neat idea, but you could you could add color or do other things too to create pattern backgrounds. Here we go. I'm in the body section. Ignore this stuff here. Okay, that's some other stuff I'm going to show you later. So I'm in the head element style. Okay, I'm in the CSS embedded style sheet. I'm in a body declaration, a declaration block. I'm going to add background image. Now, this background image is a command that says, okay, now what, where is the image? This is not an SRC. It's a URL, which is a similar kind of idea in CSS. And you can guess what that is. It would be the path. In this case, though, the image is sitting right there. So there's the name of the image, which you should download. I've already downloaded it called bullseye.png. And what is that? It's a bullseye pattern in a in white with a lot of transparency added and opacity, so it's see-through kind of. Oops, I didn't save my work. Just a minute here. Sorry, in Chrome. Finally, there it is. Okay, good. Okay, so you see how it starts in the upper left-hand corner. And then it repeats in a line that keeps on repeating and repeating as the lines continue. Okay, good. So that's um, the default position and treatment. But what if I don't want it to repeat? Well, then I can say, or type, excuse me, background, repeat, no repeat. So repeat is the default. Okay. Um, no repeat, it just sits up there in the corner. And of course I can say repeat, I can change it. I can say repeat X. Try that. I think you should actually be typing these and trying these and pausing as you go. Repeat X goes repeating that way and you can guess what's going to happen if I say repeat Y, right? So I'm just trying to get used to the behavior, the background images, the things you can do to them. Repeat Y goes down there. Good. What if I say, I'm going to put it back to repeat again. Now, I don't have to use the word repeat, but I might as well. Just plain repeat, which is the default. Okay, again, it starts in the corner and repeats through the entire area. Now I want to change the position. I'm going to make the background position center. So it's another command I can use. I can use background background repeat position 
center. So what's happened now? It's put a the, the first one in the center of the window and it's tiled them around it all the way around. Okay, now I can change the position also, I can do center and I can add more numbers here to offset it a little bit one way or the other to change it how it starts. So if I did center and then put a space and put 100 px. So what's the difference? Let's go back to the first one. It has to do with high, how high up it starts. This one starts a little bit different position. The one I just had starts up a little bit higher than the one down here. So it's where in position to the top of the window does it begin. Um, there's more numbers. You can read in your text about more ways you can position. Um, but what's one thing that's happening is, of course, when I scroll the page, the pattern goes with me. A really neat trick is to say background attachment. fixed. Let's do that. Okay, background attachment is fixed. Now the background stays steady and the page scrolls over it. <clears throat> so you can imagine lots of kind of images you could put back there, lots of patterns that would add interest, but it shouldn't be too distracting. That's what I like about that opacity. That's actually the end of the assignment. Now you have some choices. You can move ahead with the extra credit. But first I want to show you a couple other quick things which are not part of the assignment or part of the extra credit. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here. Can you have more than one background image? Yes, you can. Your text writes about that. Um, I'm going to grab all this stuff here and paste it in this in the body. This is all applied in the body, right? Because you want the background to go over the entire body. I can have a background that goes over something smaller, like just a heading or something like that. And I could, and I would just apply to a different element. Now I have one, two, three background images. These are all sitting in my in my root folder. I have lots of background images there. And I've given them positioning, and I've told them all not to repeat. So let's save this. So I have the bullseye here. I made a big J there, and I have an at symbol here. Those are all images that I made, and now they sit there, and they scroll along with the page. So you can put more than one background image. That's one interesting thing. So far, these have all been pattern kind of graphical images. But what if instead I take an, an image that is a, a JPEG? This is a, I imagine it's kind of the image of a, uh, of a restaurant. Now, this is not, the rest of my page isn't made very well for this, but I want to just give you the idea. Instead, down here in the body, I'm going to stick this JPEG, no repeat, center top. It's a large image, and it is now centered top. It has been his background. Hey, you say, it looks like it's just like any other image. Yes, but it's been, it's a background image. So it wouldn't have a caption. It'd be there for information. It would be there for presentation purposes only. Okay, so much for that. Let's continue along, shall we? Okay, for the extra credit, we're going to be in the Pixlr editor. Again, um, our the website we're using for image editing. Um, and your instructions go through about how to make your own op opacity-based background PNG image. So for the extra credit, you'll make a copy of that color one, another copy. I give you what to name to call it. And you're going to go make something else, like the bullseye, but your own. Um, so you can show you how to make one of those images. And um, there's instructions here, but I'm actually going to do it, and you can play along with me. And then in the end, if you want, you can get even more practice. You'll see in your text there's more background image exercises using supplied images, using that color one. Um, and you can go get those images from Moodle and keep on playing and practicing if you want to practice some more. But let, let me show you how to make one of these images with this website. So we want to make a new image. And I'm going to give it, make it 400 by 400 pixels. That's about the size that bullseye was. I'm going to get a square because I'm going to imagine kind of a squarish thing. You could change the sizes completely if you want. I'm going to make it transparent. I'm going to call this extra, and then my last name, whatever. Okay, good. And there we go. So I now have this little 400 by 400 pixel canvas. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a letter, but there are drawing tools here that you could practice with. And as I, just, as I mentioned before, if you ever have any questions about Pixlr, there's help material, or better yet, just go Google it. Like Google how to draw a triangle and then do a triangle or something. Uh, I'm going to make use a letter. I'm going to type it in there, and I'm going to do a, how about an ampersand? There it is, an ampersand. Now, this is defaulted to 130 uh, point because that's what I used last. But yours is going to be much smaller. I suggest you make it 130, which is the biggest size. Mine is at this Castler font because it's what I wanted to use. But you can go through and try many other fonts that you want. Okay, and you can make it bold if you want or not. You can change the alignment if you want. It's not going to make much difference at all. I do want you to make the color white. Now you can play with other colors. If you want to do a different color one, it's okay with me. White would give us that kind of opaque background, but you could try some other color if you want. If you want to do a color, I'm not sure how this is going to start, which of these it's going to be on, these color choices. I'm using RGB, which you should know something about now. I'm going to make it white by adding all the colors, right? But you could change it yourself uh, and change it any color that you want. Okay, I'm going to say okay. Okay, with my regular selection tool, I can move it around right into the center, roughly. So far, not very interesting. How do I make it bigger? 130 was actually the maximum that uh, this free version of Pixlr will let you make a piece of uh, piece of text. But we can turn it into an image and then stretch it using free transform. Okay, here is my layer over here with that image on it. If I do a right click on it and choose rasterize, I've turned that image this layer into an image as opposed to being text. And now for this image, if I say edit, free transform, I get these squares. Now why are these squares offset from the image? I don't know. It doesn't matter though, because if you use those squares, you can make it bigger. And I want to use them to make them make it roughly the size of my canvas. Like that. Good. So I've got this giant ampersand now. That's fine, but I want to reduce the opacity of it to about 20%. How do I get to opacity? I'm still on that layer. Oh, by the way, I click in here, I can say, yes, I do want to apply that, that big free transform. Now I click these layer options, or layer settings, all right? And one of them is opacity, and it's at 100%, but I'm going to bring it down to 20, or I can just write in here, 20. And what has happened? Well, it's probably very hard to see on your screen, but it's still there, but it's like almost transparent because it's only 20% opacity, which is okay. So I'm going to now um, save it. File, save, and don't worry, there is no save as. File save works as, a, as that. The name I'm going to leave the same, okay? And I, but I want it to be not a JPEG, I want it to be a PNG. So I say, okay. No other choices I have to make there, which is kind of easy. And I'm going to go into my background images. And I have a lot of other things in mind, more than you're going to have, so don't worry about that. I give it a name. It's called Extra Downs. i got to remember that. And I can leave this here, whatever. Go to Notepad++. Plus plus. Instead of my bullseye, now I'm going to, this is my new copy. I'm not working off the same copy. I've made another copy of this file. All right, this background images thing. I have a new name. I tell you what to name it. So don't overwrite your other one. I said extra downs PNG. Save it and run it. And there's my ampersand in the background. See? That's where I used to have the bullseye. I could have made the opacity maybe not quite so light. Um, you may see that this has a little bit less resolution. It's a little bit bitty on the edges because I made it so large. That's one of the things about Pixlr because it doesn't if you, you to get a full size thing, you've got to make you got to pay for the pay for the full copy, and that would allow you to make a larger piece of text, which then wouldn't have to be enlarged so much. But it's no big deal; it's a background image anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I could have made it smaller too, which would have, they wouldn't have had resolution problems. So there's the background images. Um, uh, you could should consider maybe doing a background image for your resume file. Uh, a few of my st students in past semesters have and worked out could work out well. On the other hand, maybe you just stick with background colors.